up everybody welcome to hammer down motorsports behind me we have our 2019 ram rebel and this is a ram box model and for those of you who do not have the ram boxes i would probably assume that you've never had ram boxes because well they're absolutely amazing but with that being said there is a couple of options for kind of customizing accessorizing your ram box kind of make it more suited to your personal needs and there is some accessories you can get from the dealership but they're a little bit pricey there's a divider kit that comes with some nets and it comes with a few dividers if you guys have ram boxes you know there is those little slots in there but they don't give you anything to divide them you have to buy that separately and they range from i think 130 dollars i've seen them all the way up to like almost 200 dollars just for those little plastic dividers so i thought to myself i'm like i'm pretty sure i could probably make those myself and I kind of went through a little bit of that process of the R&D of those yesterday. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean and pretty much how far I got on these so far. All right. So we've got our RAM box here. And as you can see, we have some dividers. These took me probably about, I would say, half hour or so. Just a little bit of kind of trial and error. This is the first one that I built, as you can see. Yeah, it's a little bit loose, but we did have to do a little bit of trial try to make everything kind of work. And what we have here, this is half inch plastic. I got a sheet of this from Amazon. I will have a link for it. This one, I, I did go a little bit thicker just because I thought then I would have some room to kind of cut down the edges and make everything nice and happy. And you can see I did go a little bit too thin on this one and I cut it on both sides, but I ended up using my table saw and that made a really nice cut. So this, I mean, it pretty much looks like a factory cut on these and well, as you can see, this one here, it's a little loose. I might get a little bit of weather stripping or something like that and put it on the ends, but I mean, I don't think I'm gonna hear this going down the road. Not really a big deal, but on these here, you can see this one's got a little bit of play. This one's actually pretty tight. And one thing I did find is the distance between here and here on these three were all different. So this one actually cut down a little bit from these ones just to kind of make it fit. So when you buy them from the factory, I believe they have a taper on them. And in these grooves, this one's actually fairly tight. Get this one out of here. In these grooves right here, it actually tapers down at the bottom. So it's, yeah, it's a little bit tricky to kind of gauge how big you need to make these. And as you can see on mine, they are square. So that's not really a big deal for me, I think as far as for functionality goes it's nice and strong it's going to keep this is my novice stretch and i have my little bose speaker in here now the stuff isn't going to slide around too terribly much i mean i can put more stuff in this little compartment and then it kind of divides the front and then you have basically four separate compartments on this one side of the ram box the other side i didn't make any dividers for but i mean obviously i can go get more plastic and do that if i feel like it but i think just having one set here is going to do everything for my purposes and i can keep things kind of separated for whatever reason i might have to do so so as far as changing up the design from well this loose one back here this one you can see it moves on the top because like i said it does taper down it's tighter at the bottom than it is at the top so i mean you could get fancy with these and you know start shaving them down so you have like kind of go down to a point at the end and then have it get thicker as it comes up to the top but i didn't really want to put all that much time into these i mean it's not really rocket science these are going to do the job and they come out really nicely they go in and they're definitely going to hold what i need where i needs to be so on these what i did is i only cut it on the one side it gave me a little bit more I guess control of how thick I was going to have this piece. I basically was just taking off blade width with my table saw and we're going to go over to the table saw. I have one more of these to cut and I'll show you how I made these reliefs and yeah, let's go use a table saw. Not exactly as directed. By the way, do this at your own risk because well, I mean, never know what can happen. Table saws can be dangerous. All right, so you can see my table saw looks like it's been rolling coal. We got our exhaust over here. Lots of plastic material. Probably should have put the bag on it, but no big deal. I'm just gonna end up vacuuming that up anyways once we're all done here. But it shouldn't be a big deal with this saw blade because, well, obviously it's made to cut wood, so plastic should be a little bit, a little bit easier to cut through, I would hope. But this is our piece that we're gonna cut today. And what our dimensions is, this is half inch thick plastic and it is six inches this way and it is nine and a quarter from end to end. And it doesn't fit perfectly. I mean, we do have a tiny little bit of back and forth there. You may have been able to make this a little bit 
wider at the top and kind of taper it down. But for our purposes today, nine and a quarter is going to get the job done. It's going to fit all the way to the bottom. It's just going to be, uh, yeah, like I said, a little bit more narrow at the top just because of that taper from the factory. But either way, I did make a cut over here already. And I just basically made this deep enough so it's going to clear those tracks from the factory kind of grooves that are in there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take our table saw, set our blade height just so we can cut this little kind of notch in here. And then that should give us enough clearance to fit into that factory groove. So how I kind of figured out the dimensions to set it up for the table saw, I made a little mark here on my table saw and after doing a little trial and error with one of our other ones, I used that one as a guide to make the others. And you got to remember too that just the front, the middle and the rear are slightly different. So you might have to kind of tweak them a little bit, just kind of cut off a little bit at a time just to make sure they're going to fit your ram box because they're not exactly perfectly consistent from the front to the middle or the rear slot. Get our hearing protection on, get our eye protection on, fire this thing up. Yeah, there you can see, we got a nice straight cut and we've got a nice groove in our divider. So now obviously on the other side, we're gonna have to make both cuts. So we're gonna change up our saw here a little bit. Just gonna remove the fence, move it back a little bit here. We're gonna lower our blade down. And now I'm gonna use our cut side to set our height. So we're gonna push it up with the blade and come down just slightly so we know that our height is good. And then, I'm going to use this side as well to set our fence depth. So that's nice and straight. Now we're going to take our uncut side, make sure it's on the same side as our groove, set that up against the fence, fire up the saw. go back to the same position we were before I have my line here on my saw and to set our depth for our saw I'm going to use our side that's cut already set it up here raise up our blade starting to lift lower it down that should set us up where we need to be Make sure everything's nice and straight here on the fence with our mark. Lock it into place. Now we're ready to make our final cut. There you have it. Just want to make sure you're cutting on both on the same side, obviously. But yeah, it works out pretty good. We got a really nice cut on both sides. Let's go see if it fits in our truck. So we're going to take out our loose one here at the back. This was the tightest as far as any of these went. I actually had to trim that one down a little bit. So I really don't think this one's going to fit back here. Okay, so yeah, we can go about that far with it before it gets a little bit too tight so I would have to trim a little bit to make it fit in the rear let's try the middle one slide that one down. make sure nothing's underneath and nice and tight in the groove you can definitely get it out if you wanted to you could put a hole in here I didn't think it was really necessary but yeah this one does fit down nice we do have a little bit of movement at the top that we were expecting just because obviously the top here is a little bit more 
wide and then it gets more narrow at the bottom. But we can close it, no problem at all. There's no interference with the door. You guys heard that little snap. That's just the weather stripping here on my tonneau cover, but not a big deal whatsoever. So this one fits nicely in the middle. I'm sure it'll fit in the front as well, except for this one, which I actually cut down so it would fit the rear because we do have more of a narrow space in the back here. But if I do need to use this back one, it does work for that purpose as well. And we got some nice dividers here for a Ram box for the grand total of $20, not $130 or close to $200. So yeah, if you guys have a little bit of ingenuity, you have a table saw, you have $20 and an Amazon account and you can go buy this plastic or you can buy this plastic pretty much anywhere. You can also do it a different way too. You can get thinner plastic. You can get, I think around quarter inch or so. What we're gonna do is we'll take a tape and we'll measure what our exact kind of groove width here that will fit all the way to the bottom is. If you guys just wanna get thinner pieces and not have to do the cutting like I did, that's an option as well. All right, so I took my caliper and I got a pretty accurate measurement here on the land that's actually gonna go into our groove and we're looking at a quarter of an inch. So if you wanted to buy quarter inch plastic, it probably would work without having to do this. I wanted to go half inch because I wanted something a little more substantial, especially if things are banging around in there. I didn't want them to get broken or, or to bow or anything like that and maybe pop out. But either way, you guys can do these whichever which way you want. This is just kind of one of those things that I did want to share with you guys. If you want to save some money, make some dividers for your Ram boxes, this is the way I did it. All right, everybody. So today I was on YouTube watching a channel called Waterfowler41, and he has a white Rebel as well, and he's done a couple of different mods on that truck. Just kind of some of the similar stuff that I've done, but there's other stuff that he went a different way with. I use the Switch Pros. He used another thing called Trigger, I believe it is. Either way, definitely check out his channel if you guys want to get some more ideas on some mods. He's a smaller channel, definitely trying to grow, and he's got some really good videos, very in-depth on how to do all the installations, all that kind of stuff like that. And there might be a few ideas that he has for his truck that maybe I'm not going to do on my truck. Like the current video that I watched today is something that I've, I've been interested in, and he made a very good video on it. It was actually putting on the brackets for the driving lights up here on your hood. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely check out his channel. I will have all his information in the description. I do not think I'm going to go with those brackets just because it's, it's not something that I really used on my Jeep. And I don't think I'm going to really use it on this truck. I think we've got some more ideas for in behind the bumper, a little more stealthy kind of look for myself. But every truck is different and that's why, you know, everybody builds their truck their way. But definitely a great channel and you're going to want to check them out. So what's next for the Ram Rebel? Well, obviously we've been in the process of doing the Switch Pros, but that's kind of, it's a dynamic mod because there's so many different things that are gonna be going into that. And I don't wanna put one section on and then have to do the same thing twice with routing wiring or anything like that. So getting that all together, I really wanted to have a final decision for myself. What, are, what is all the lighting and all the things that I wanna put in the truck all at one time before we finish all the wiring on that and get that all working but that definitely is coming. And I do have a little bit of a lead on our front camera because some of the research that I did early on, I don't think it's gonna work the way that I initially anticipated. And I mean, obviously I haven't pulled the screen out, but I think there is only one main plug on there and it may require an interface. So there's a company that I was talking to yesterday and they're building an interface. So there is definitely one in the works. So I'm just gonna kind of see how that all pans out, but definitely haven't forgotten about that. And if we can make it work on this truck, well, we're gonna do everything we can to do so. And over here, you can see we still have our left front wheel off, which we're gonna need off to do our Switch Pros wiring into the cab for the panel. And we're still waiting on our spacers, probably expect those maybe sometime next week. So that's gonna be very nice to actually see our stance. If you guys saw on the last video, you can see how the tire is gonna sit and that's with a one and a half inch spacer and that's what we got coming. So very excited to get that all installed and try it out see what our clearance is and all that kind of good stuff. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Definitely drop your comments in the comment section. And as always, keep that hammer down. Perfect.